Here comes a fresh team guide for the Illuvium Arena. I took the last week's tournament winner. We had a little Illuvium tournament on Saturday and I took the winner's deck, recreated in Illuvium and I tweaked it a little bit because I think it could have been a little bit better. And I'm going to show you how it's done, how you can play it. You can import it yourself. You can find the link in the description down below. But before we're going to talk about that, let me quickly mention that we have another tournament coming up this Saturday. And it's a special one because it's a starter team tournament. You can see it right here. The starter teams in Illuvium, Hotfish, I Need Healing and Muddy Friends. Those are the only decks you can use. And I think that's really cool because people don't have to find the perfect meta decks. Everybody has the same chances. And basically it's a best of three every match. And it's conquest format. So you cannot win every game with Hotfish. If you win one game with Hotfish, then the second win you need to secure with one of the other teams. And that's going to be the tournament. You can sign up. You can find this Twitter link in the description down below as well. Please repost, share, because we need a lot of signups to secure better and bigger sponsors. You can find the sign-up link right here with the sign-up graphic. You click on that, you will be redirected to the start.gg homepage. A lot of people, uh, a lot of you guys have been using it already. Basically, all the Luvium tournaments have been on start.gg. And yeah, you click join here, then you have to sign up for the event. So here you join for the tournament and then you sign up for the event and you will find all the rules and all the stuff in here. You can also join the Phantom Discord where we're going to do the most organizational stuff and all of that things. That being said, let's jump into the deck guide. I hope to see you all on Saturday on stream. Yeah, we're going to stream it as well. I hope to see you all in the tournament. Let's check out the tournament winner deck and well, basically the tweaked version that I have right here. So we have the Ramfire line. We have the Umber. I haven't played the Umber line a lot yet. Uh, we have the Adorius, the Vermilion, Spore, Revenant. Just the matter composition right now. And I think Spore and Revenant has to be nerfed a little bit. Then we bring in the Malura. Usually we're just going to play the Lura to get free Earth. We got the Apon right here for Earth and Mystic. We also got the Gorilla. If we don't play a mirror match versus Revenant, we play the Gorilla. Because it's such a good unit. But just in versus Revenant, you don't want to play it because its illusion actually gives your opponent free kills, free shields. Then we have the Chiro, which is usually going to be our main carry. Slashing didn't come in much to play yet, but we have the option to go into Water Rogues if we want to do that. To counter specific affinities with the Volante, with the Slapping. We got a links, and this is basically the flex pick kind of. You can remove the links. You can remove all those stage two, stage three volantes. They are just fillers, basically, because 99% of the games you're just gonna play the basic volantes. And we brought a lot of them. We got all the five different volantes. We got water, earth, fire, nature, and air. So depending on which affinities your opponent is playing, that's what you want to build your team around. Because you can go into three nature with the Adorius and the Ranger being Spore. You can go into three fire with the Ramp Fire. You can activate your free Earth with the Mystic Apon. So you have a lot of different options how to play this team. And then for weapons, we brought one Scion Gauntlet. I added this because I want to have the option of having my Ramp Fire being Phantom in the late game. Or activating Phantom through my Ranger if I get, for example, a Revenant Emblem. Then we have the Inferno Revenant weapons right here. And we have the Spore and Dust Revenant weapons right here. And we basically bring in three Arcane Sash. All the three different versions of Arcane Sash. Plus, plus a Void Sash for the Inferno if we play that. Because we need to um, cast very soon. So I'm going to show you now a game that we played. And it's versus basically Magma fighter arcanite a really strong deck as well activating a lot of synergy let's see how that goes all right we're gonna fast forward a lot actually let's check out the augment selection we have minus healing usually pretty good but they don't play around healing we have barrier buster again enemy doesn't have barriers and we have hyperkinetic stimulator which is basically a omega power stacking thing uh augment and it's gonna be very good on your main carry like chiro because he's gonna be casting a lot he's gonna be stacking up a lot of omega power all right let's jump in first round is basically always the same opener you're gonna play three air units vermilier volante and rota you always gonna bond your ranger with the vermilier because this is can give us either dust revenant 
or Spore Revenant, the two main compositions we play. You also have the option of bonding with a Ramphy to go into the Inferno Phantom Revenant line, but that's not happening so much anymore, especially not in the early game. Usually you want to do that in the late game, but there are situations where you would do that as well. So let's fast forward. Our opponent is taking some time. He's playing free fire and we have an easy time beating him there. The only thing that beat us round one, I think, live on stream was three fire, three bulwark. That was pretty good if they positioned right. By the way, I was pl playing this whole team on stream today. We played like 10 matches and the first six matches I won. And I explain a lot what I do. And if you want more information on this deck, just check out my stream and you can check out all the matches that I played today. All right, fast forwarding to the augment selection phase. So basically we got water infusion, which is not that good. It sounds better than it is. It gives you three energy regen and we got abyssal purge. Um, this makes so if a unit of you dies, then it debuffs all the enemy units to have less resistances. Also not that good. And in the middle right here, we have corrosive aura, which is arguably one of the best augments overall right now, because it's like a little inferno stack. It does percentual max health damage around that illuvium Illuvial that you equip it to. So we're gonna definitely go for Corrosive Aura and we're gonna equip that to our Remilia, which is probably the most tanky unit in our team. Just making sure that this Augment doesn't die with the Illuvial and stays alive as long as possible. Round two, we're gonna go into Vermilia right here, activating Spore and Revenant by also putting a Nature Dagger onto our Ranger. Yeah, we put the nature dagger right here. We got now Spore and Revenant activated four rogues. And now we're gonna bring in the two Earth rogues right here. Grilla plus Volante. If you play a mirror match again against Revenants, you don't want to play the Grilla and you would play instead the Lura. But then also the money is a little bit like you couldn't afford it right now. And you basically have to adjust your um, early game a little bit. All right, let's have a quick look at positioning here. So I know he has his bulwark here and he's probably gonna try to position his other units to snipe one of my units. So there's two options now. Either he goes to snipe my main carry, Rota, which wouldn't be the best idea because I can easily reposition him later. Every time I upgrade, I ascend a unit, I can also reposition them for free. So that might not be the best call. The other idea is to go for my Ranger. Imagine those two guys are not here yet, right? He doesn't see them we just played them now so in my mind he one of my most vulnerable units and also one of my most important units is the ranger so keeping a ranger alive is very important so how are we gonna do that we put a rogue next to it and a rogue next to it here we have the milia next to it and here so our ranger is gonna land like here and then it's gonna be two rogues left and right of it which basically makes it really hard for our opponent to snipe our ranger and that's why we put our two rogues here. If we play a mirror matchup, usually I want to put my Verm... Wait, let me clean that up. In a mirror match, usually I put my Vermilia in the middle as a main tank. And then I put all my other rogues on one side, on the opposing side of the enemy positioning. And then we're going to jump. Our Vermilia is going to get focused by all those guys, all his rogues. And our rogues are going to be kind of safe, if you know what I mean. So with that in mind, we positioned our rogues to the left side and it exactly worked out he wanted to snipe my ranger or at least that's what would have happened if i didn't have my rogues here our grilla even cast ones bringing in the illusion taunting everybody and now we got a kill we got the shields from the revenants and that's all we really needed and it's an easy w easy win next round we got vanguard don't need that adaptive reflection we don't need energy resistance so we got Omnisource, which is stacking Omega Power up to 120 Omega Power for your whole team after casting three times. So that one is really good. And we got Stellar Devourer. Stellar Devourer is more a niche use case where you want to deny enemy Illuvials from casting. But it's very hard to actually attack the right unit that you want to deny. For example, there's a, there's a Dorio standing right here. I put it on my Rota. Rota jumps back there, attacks the Adorios and steals energy all the time, making it impossible for the Adorius to heal. But that can be so easily countered, so Stellar Devourer definitely a hard augment to pull off, and Omnisource just overall really, really strong augment, really easy to play. You just put it on a unit that casts two to three times, doesn't die right away, right? And that's, that's all you gotta do, basically. 
fast forward i think he's going for the same one i don't think we got that next round we're gonna bring in our full board with the Ador, the monkey and in this case the nature volante again you can also activate different traits you can play like five earth we all always kind of want to go to six rogues and revenant and spore spore can also become dust later on but usually it's gonna stay spore which is a bit better but for example versus behemoths you like to play dust because then you have a blind versus the behemoth auto attacks so in this case we're gonna bring in our full board and actually have all our traits activated and i just love how that looks i think it's beautiful now we all also always want to bring in the augments because they're free to play right and then first I think about bringing in the Arcane Sash right here, the armor, but then re later realize I actually have enough money to upgrade our Adorado and now we have three Spore and this is just the maximum value you can get out of this and really, it's really enjoyable to play round three and just use up all your mastery points and have all those traits activated. So I had a lot of fun today on stream playing this deck also because we won a lot of games but... It was also very fun to play this deck. Later on, we got a little bit more into mirror matches, but then I, I figured out the mirror match as well, and we were able to, to win it decisively in the last game before we stopped the stream. So that's basically our positioning. Um, ideas behind this is that our Adorado, because it's Spore, has a lot of dodge chance, has a lot of survivability, so he should be able to tank the, the Furyox right there. And then we put our Monkey next to it. This means the Furyox is going to do AoE damage to all our units here. But this also means our monkey will be able to stun the Furyox, taking a lot of damage away from him. So that's our thought process behind positioning those mystics. And then we just put, you know, the nature in the corner. Why not? Nature in this case is actually not so good. So if you have problems versus this fire, magma, earth setup, you wouldn't play nature, right? Because nature gets countered by all of that. So if this is giving you a bit more trouble, then you would, for example, play water. The, the water slap in and also the water volante instead of nature which then both counter earth and fire and yeah you have a lot of option to actually play those rogues that are good hyper wise against the enemy affinities so let's see now how this works out i think there's no more positioning going on we can just fast forward see what happens we get a resell into the furyox we can watch if we actually deny a lot of time here with the stun from the monkey. We can also check what, which of our units are dying first. We're killing, have an easy kill over there. Our rota is safe, rolls in, does a lot of damage. And we almost, yeah, we killed the ranger. We're getting those shields and yeah, he, he doesn't stand a chance basically. I don't know how you can win with this deck. I've seen a lot of people play this deck. It looks pretty good because you got everything activated as well, right? Next turn he's gonna get Earth and Bulwark activated and then he has also a fully stacked board. But yeah, it hasn't been working against my team. Um, so what we got, we got Shield in a medium area, or, uh, applied around in a medium area. Which is not that good in this, uh, in this case because we're not clumped up. We're positioned in a lot of different clumps and so if we put this medium area buff here, we would only hit like 3-4 units. So you're not going to get a lot of value out of that. And I don't want to clump up my units to get the most value out of that. So that's a no-go. Also, enemy has no shields. In a mirror match, this would be the go-to. And then we're only left with water infusion. I think there's a typo here because it says gain free energy region per second. Which kind of sounds like it's stacking. Like 3, 6, 9, 12. And then after the 4 seconds, you would have 12 energy region. But that cannot be the case. After like 20 seconds, you would just cast every second so basically it means you get three energy region which is not that good it's not that bad our main carry our gyro is already augmentized we put the stellar devourer and the stacking omega power on it so we're gonna put this onto our adorado and then for the next turn we're gonna upgrade our main carry we're gonna get our gyro and then we're just going to use our left up mastery points for a better weapon on our ranger. You can also bring in a better armor and use the left over mastery points for repositioning. So you have that freedom here. But basically we're just going to upgrade our Adorius with our last ascension token. Then we're going to just give our ranger the weapon plus a 20 cost armor. We have five mastery points left for repositioning. So we position our monkey over here. And because we upgraded our Adorius with an ascension token to the stage 3. Once you upgrade your units, they are free to move again. So now we have a free reposition that's not going to cost us any mastery points. 
and that's why we can just use the five mastery points to get the monkey over get the adorius over and the idea behind is if he's smart he realizes that i'm denying him here pretty good with my mystics and he's gonna swap over to this side so i want to be ahead of that also we're taking away the opportunity from him that he could bring up his damage dealers and try to snipe my mystics to to burst them down right and yeah so that's what we're gonna do here i think we're also gonna do a little bit of reposition with repositioning with our rogues no we didn't do that oh yeah we did a little repositioning on our rogues uh most notably our gyro right here because i was scared he realizes gyro is my main carry so he could position all his units right here into my gyro and try to snipe him so by pu putting our gyro right here in the middle we're gonna have gyro protected by the outside rogue same as our ranger is protected by the outside rogue and basically we have our main carries in the middle and then our lesser valuable rogues on the outside trying to protect the flanks trying to give them um yeah just trying to protect their sides and that's why Chiro moves into the middle, so it's very unlikely that he can ever snipe my Chiro, which is my main carry. And as long as Chiro stays alive, he's gonna burst down everything. And yeah, then we upgrade Adorius and put the weapons on the Ranger to use up all our mastery points. Reposition Adorius over. And yeah, he didn't go for it, but again, if he played those two big behemoths, if he placed them here into my Mystics, they're dead. Really bad. If he placed them here into my lonely Chiro, He's dead. Really bad. So we basically eliminated eliminated all the options that our opponent had to counter us. We didn't give him the free snipe into our mystics by repositioning them. And we also brought our gyro into a safe positioning over here. Let's see how it works out. Which is really funny here is that we're doing so much damage to this here. Look at that guy. He's just gone, man. Like after a few seconds, he's down to 30%. Chiro rolls in. We're getting the shields from our revenants. And yeah, he basically has absolutely no chance. Which is weird because yeah, he doesn't have Earth activated. I think I saw a team list where also Earth is activated. But I think it's weird that this has so little chance because it seems pretty good. But I guess it's it depends a lot on the positioning of the behemoths. He should have tried to snipe my mystics. I think that's the most value he could have gotten out of that um but yeah there you go we beat him in a clean 4-0 swipe sweep thank you everybody for tuning in i hope you liked the guide if you did subscribe like comment share you know you know how it's done and most importantly check out the tournament sign up for the tournament we need a lot of signups it's gonna be happening saturday 8 p.m cet so basically evening time for Europe, which should be really good for USA and Europe. Not so good for Asia and Australia this time, but last time it was good for that time zone. So we're going to swap it around a little bit. And yeah, I hope to see you on Saturday on the stream. Tomorrow we're also going to have a stream with Scoriox finding out who is the better gamer. Another gamer challenge, this time versus Scoriox after we destroyed Viper. <laughs> All right, enough yapping. See you in the next video, see you on stream, see you in the tournament. Have a wonderful day, peace out everybody.